Sometimes the smallest parts can keep a gun from shooting. Let's see if we can get this antique Sharps rifle to shoot. It's a fairly rare 1869 model, chambered in 5070 government. As a saddle ring carbine, it's similar to what a Texas Ranger might have carried in the 1870s. Less than a thousand of this model were produced, and this Sharps has survived pretty much intact. I'd like to shoot this gun with some black powder loads, but during my initial inspection, I found that the firing pin tip was broken off. This repair is relatively simple and begins by removing the breech block. The plunger is depressed, then the lever pin is rotated until it clears the mortise in the receiver. Now I pull the pin and the breech block and extractor come right out the bottom. The retaining screw is removed and the firing pin slides out. You can see that the tip is broken off. The firing pin tip should protrude like the one on the breech block from this original 1874 model. In order to determine the correct size of the firing pin tip, the measurements are taken from the original. This firing pin tip is just over 1 8 inch in diameter. Pushing it all the way forward, I can measure the maximum protrusion with the firing pin gauge. Seventy-eight thousandths. Very generous by today's standards. The repair is straightforward. The only supplies needed are a piece of drill rod for the new tip and some 290 green Loctite to hold it in place. To repair the broken firing pin, I'll fixture it in the milling vise, squaring it up properly. This will ensure that the portion of the tip that's remaining is perfectly vertical. A carbide end mill is used to face off the broken tip. Only enough material is removed to give a perfectly flat surface. Now, using the milling table and a 1 8 inch plug gauge, I can perfectly center the firing pin under the quill. Once the firing pin is centered, a 1 8 inch center cutting carbide end mill is tightened in the collet and fed down slowly into the firing pin, about a quarter of an inch. All the chips and oil are clean from the hole, so I can check the fit of the drill rod. A bit of Loctite is applied, and the drill rod is pushed in until it's fully seated. Once the Loctite cures, the firing pin is installed back into the breech block and checked to make sure that it doesn't bind. A shop made spacer, 78 thousandths thick, is slid over the firing pin. With the breech block secure in the vise, I use a cutoff wheel to shorten the firing pin to the correct length. Then I simply round over and polish the tip. A rounded smooth tip prevents piercing the primer. The repaired firing pin is installed into the breech block. and the breech block and extractor are slid back into the rifle. Now, I'm ready to reload some ammo and head to the range.